Flat Earth Round Earth by Teresa Martin. Let's check this book out and see what's going on. Flat Earth Round Earth by Teresa Martin. Yada yada yada. In science class, Mrs. Markin gave us balls of lightweight clay to make models of the Earth. We had blue clay for the oceans. Here's the clay they got here and gray clay for the continents. When Stan took his ball and smashed it flat, we all laughed. What's so funny, Mrs. Markham asked. But then she saw his flattened earth and her upper lips got tight. Why did you destroy your model? I didn't, Stan replied. I made it flat, the way the earth really is. Mrs. Markham opened her mouth and shut it and the rest of us stood waiting. That's silly, she finally said. You know that the earth isn't flat. It is so flat, Stan said. Look outside the window. Here's Stan looking outside the window, like a weirdo. We all turn our eyes to the window. It just looks flat because it's so big, Mrs. Markham said. We can't see the curve because we're so very tiny. But if it was round, the people on the bottom would fall off. You know why they don't fall off, Mrs. Markham snapped? It's because of gravity. Stan shook his head. What do you mean? Mrs. Markham demanded, you've seen pictures of Earth from space. It's a sphere, like an orange. Everyone knows that. It is not, Stan said, and you can't make me believe it. He turned his back on her and walked away. So Mrs. Markham sent Stan to the principal's office, and the rest of us went back to work modeling clay into continents. Here's Stan all upset that he's forced to accept the true reality of the shape of the planet. But I was bothered. I knew that the Earth was round. Everyone did. That's what I learned in science class. We had a globe at home with all the continents on it. I've seen pictures taken from outer space and diagrams of the solar system. But Mrs. Markham said that the scientists who change the way we think about the world are the ones who ask questions and don't take everyone else's word for how things are. Maybe Stan was right and the rest of us were wrong. I shouldn't simply accept Stan's idea of what the world looks like any more than Stan should accept Mrs. Markham's. In science class, we learned that ideas like Stan's and Mrs. Markham's are called hypotheses. A hypothesis is a guess about what the world is like. Because Stan and Mrs. Markham have different hypotheses, we need to look closely at the Earth itself to see which hypotheses is more likely to be true. If the Earth is flat, like Stan says, then we should find more things about the world that show it to be flat. But if the Earth is round, then we'll discover more facts that make us think it's round. So I ought to be able to prove it, one way or the other. But how? I walked over to Stan's empty desk and brought his smashed earth over to my desk. Dad told me that a long time ago everyone thought the world was flat and if you sailed a ship far enough you'd fall right over the edge. I imagined the frightened seamen sailing farther and farther away from shore, sure that at any moment their ship would drop over the edge of the world. That never happened. I lifted up the round earth. There was Europe where Christopher Columbus started. He sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and discovered the Americas. Well, that's not exactly accurate. I believe Amerigo Vespucci discovered North America, and I believe Christopher Columbus discovered Colombia, South America. But that's neither here nor there. Let's continue. Now, let me stop. Of course, Vikings did settle in Canada for a very short period of time, but they didn't colonize it for very long. They set up some very temporary places when they were looking for alternatives to Greenland and uh, I'm surprised they didn't stay there but Viking artifacts prove they did land in Canada before anyone else but let's continue. Now ships left Europe, traveled across the Atlantic Ocean, went through the Panama Canal or around the tip of South America and crossed the Pacific Ocean only to hit Asia and Asia was connected to Europe so it was possible to travel by ship all the way around the globe. I traced the whole route with my fingers, gouging a little path through Central America for the Panama Canal. Then I picked up Stan's flat earth and tried to do the same. It didn't work. Even if all the continents were on the same side of the disk, you'd have to travel in a circle rather than a straight line to hit all those continents. I wanted to show Stan. Surely he could see that he was wrong and not make any more trouble for himself. Since it was time for recess, I shoved both balls under my shirt. When Mrs. Markham led the class down the hall, I slipped around the corner of the office. Well, let's, let's see if we can find some proof. All right. Hey, this is some pretty good proof right here. Check this out, flat earthers. 
When you see a ship sail away, it sinks below the horizon line. Check that out. All these flat earthers are talking about buildings. I bet not a single one of them have ever talked about a, a ship disappearing because it sinks below the horizon line. It's hilarious. What other proof we got here? Forget the ships, I said. Here's another one. What are you doing when the sun comes up? Depends on the time of year, he said. Well, how about now? It was late May, so the sun rose pretty early. Doing chores, usually, he said. Think about how it gets light. You can probably see a long way from your farm. All the way to the next town, he replied proudly. We can see the tops of the grain elevator from the hayloft door. And it's pretty flat? There are a few dips and hollows, but overall it's pretty flat. Good grazing country. Think about when the sun first comes up, I said, leaning forward. Does the sunlight hit everywhere all at once, or does things get light before the rest? And his lips pursed, but he wasn't frowning this time. Even when the yard's still dark, he said slowly, the sun hits the top of the grain elevators, then it hits our barn. How does everything else get light, I asked. The furrows in Stan's brow deepened. You know, when I'm up in the hayloft, I can see the light sweeping from the east across the prairie toward the grain elevators. Once it starts, it's really fast. It takes less than a minute to go from our yard to the grain elevators. Bingo, I cried. What? The sunlight moves across the prairie because the earth is round. You saw it yourself. The sun comes up around the earth, and the line of light moves as the sun comes up higher, teaching more of the rounded globe. I don't get it, Stan said. He was frowning now. Here, look, I said. I lifted up his flat earth. If the earth were flat, then when the sun rose, the light would hit everywhere at once. I then picked up the round earth, and if the earth were round, then the light would have moved around it. The sunlight hits the top of the grain elevator first because it's so high up. But since you say the light moves across the plains to get there, it has to be round. Stan's frown deepened. No, it doesn't, he said. When the sun comes up, the line of the sunrise moves across the earth. We've both seen it. But how can we know that it's not something that happens just here? I was thinking out loud. If the earth is round, the sunrise would be a bit later the farther west you go. Hey, how are you going to find that out, Stan asked. At the library, I said. See... This book is from the library. You know, it's a place that flat earthers never go. So I wanted to bring the library to the flat earthers. Now, I can't legally read the entire book. I recommend you buy it yourself. Flat Earth, Round Earth, written and illustrated by Teresa Martin. Pick up this book at the library or buy it on Amazon. It's very reasonable. And basically he's talking about time zones. Time zones prove that the Earth is not flat. Time zones wouldn't work with a flat earth. And of course, this stubborn kid, this stubborn flat earther, he's totally ticked off. He's like, what? You're proving me wrong? Heck yeah, he's proving you wrong. Okay, check this out. In Tokyo, Japan, it's daytime, when in Madrid, Spain, it's nighttime. Why is that? Because the earth is a sphere. Bada bing, bada boom. More time zones, more angles. Bada bing, bada boom, bada boom, bada bang. Right here, he's talking about eclipses. Eclipses don't work. Okay, a lunar eclipse and a uh, solar eclipse don't work. They don't work with the flat Earth. They only work with a spherical Earth. Now, I saw a video showing sunsets and sunrises being in a straight line. And the guy claimed that that's proof that the Earth is flat. That's literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I can use his bullcrap to prove that the Earth is a sphere. I'm going to do that in a future video where I show some exclusive science firsthand. Something I didn't see, but something I did in astronomy class. That's another place you learn things when you go to class. So I took an astronomy course. Actually, it was Astronomy 101, the first one you can enter into in college. I learned something about sunrises and sunsets that prove the Earth is a sphere. Something that probably isn't readily available on YouTube, but YouTube isn't the only source of information. Observations supporting the round Earth. Traveling around globe. As opposed to made up stories. Ships sinking over the horizon. As opposed to optical illusion. Now ships sinking over the horizon is literally, I would say, the best evidence on here, but moving lines of light and darkness, bumps in Earth's surface. Later, sunrise times across continents. Continent is one huge bump. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Different shadow lengths in north and south. Different angles of nearby sun. <laughs> Curved shadow on eclipse. 
perfect lining up of disc-shaped earth. Let's face it, um, this kid used science and he proved the earth was a sphere. I recommend you check out this book, Flat Earth Round Earth, written and illustrated by Teresa Martin. You know, the earth is a sphere, despite your distrust of NASA. Let's just put it this way, NASA, they're not always liars, I would say 99% of the time, eh, maybe that's an exaggeration, maybe 80% of the time NASA tells the truth. And there are more ways than NASA, trust me. Geology proves the Earth is a sphere, and every geologist around the world confirm Pangaea is a continent that formed long, long ago, and then it separated into the different current continents that we have now. And the fossils in all the different continents prove that Pangaea used to be a thing. They have ancient fossils from millions of years ago proving Pangaea was a supercontinent that could have likely killed off a huge percentage of the animals because, because there was only one continent, there was less weather changes. And weather, weather is a good example. We're talking winter, spring, summer, fall, those don't exist on a flat Earth, they only exist on a spherical Earth. But with Pangaea, the dinosaurs, a lot of them died because there wasn't winter, summer. Apparently there were great changes, like winter might have lasted a long time because there was only one supercontinent. And it froze many of the creatures and they died. The creatures that survived evolved and they are what we have today. Now, flat earthers, they, uh, they think they're the center of the universe, okay? Flat earthers, they think there is no way to get into outer space. They think it's blasphemous to reach outer space. Now, I don't know where this flat earth meme originated. I'm talking about the modern day YouTube meme. It started as a meme a couple of years ago on YouTube, but Flat Earth has been a myth for many, many years. About 800 years ago, they knew for a fact the Earth was a sphere. 800 years ago, they knew it was a sphere. Christopher, Christopher Columbus knew it was a sphere. We're talking, you go back 3,000 years ago, and about 3,000 years ago, they did believe the Earth was flat with a dome, like under the dome. So about 3,000 years ago, people did commonly believe in this under-the-dome garbage. So these flat earthers are literally living 3,000 years in the past. That's pretty ancient <laughs> belief system that they literally brought back from the dead. Now, somebody is making money off of this. So follow the money concerning the scammers and the fraudsters that are cashing in on this trend. All trends get cashed in by someone. The Illuminati trend is getting cashed in by people. And Flat Earth is the, one of the latest trends in the conspiracy world that's going to get a lot of people who are not Flat Earthers to orchestrate and create garbage that they know these flat earthers will consume. Just be weary. Beware. There are flat earthers that are people that don't go to the library and aren't educated. And then there are educated people to a certain extent but they have no morals and no ethics and they like stealing from people and they think Spreading lies is fine, as long as they get some cash in their pocket. Just beware of the YouTube videos full of information that could theoretically be 100% garbage. Put all videos you watch through a, a filter. Could it be true? Could it not be true? You know, I mean, what does my gut tell me on this? And I recommend my viewers do the same thing for my videos. A lot of people are saying Flat Earth is a PSYOP, a uh, disinformation agent, propaganda piece of garbage, and I think that's a great possibility uh, because there's no way 
that it has propagated from truth tellers, despite the fact that truth is in the name of their channel. There's plenty of conspiracies showing that uh, in 1994, a card company came out, for example, called New World Order by Steve Jackson. Steve Jackson has a lot of connections with conspiracy theories. Steve Jackson is even credited to have inspired John Teeter, for example, with his time travel GURPS game that he created. But uh, this card came out in 1994, way before this YouTube flat earth trend. And that is a prophetic card, most definitely, because who knew flat earth would explode into what it is today? People laugh, but the flat earthers know something. For their action, you may roll two dice. If your roll is equal to or less than the number of places you control, the Flat Earther's weird alternate geology has led them to a gold strike, and you may draw as many plot cards as the number you rolled. One power, two resistance, weird, conservative is the category. Flat Earthers, the Earth is a sphere, and I'm willing to prove it with more science, geological science that uh, proves it, concerning Pangea. Pangea can't exist with a flat Earth. Pangea's continents changing around and moving around, that doesn't exist with a flat Earth. As a matter of fact, I would wager volcanoes don't work with a flat Earth. Mountains being created through the different layers of the crust smashing into each other doesn't work with a flat Earth. But we have geology proves it with the Pangea fossils. We have uh, the sun rising and setting. I'm going to show specifically why the sun rising and setting proves the Earth is a sphere in a future video. But this isn't the Flat Earth channel, so I try to keep my Flat Earth videos a little bit sparing. Uh, I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with the John Rasmus channel. More videos are coming soon. Subscribe if you like one of the 90 videos I have uploaded, and if you like one particular subject more than another, feel free to let me know and leave your comments and send me a message. I'm at twitter.com slash Rasmus. More videos coming soon. I thank you for watching. Be seeing you. Thank you.